minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Lift off. Lift off. 30 minutes after the hour. in Los Angeles. Today is July 18th. We have an incredible lineup of 10 beers from amazing breweries from around the country. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey gang, how are you? Just here watching the sunset and uh, I'm excited to be here on Drafts and Laughs. And uh, I've been having a lot of fun so far on the show. I, uh, watching, you know, but now it's time for me to have some fun here from my house here in Los Angeles. I'm going to be taking some phone calls and talking to some funny people and, uh, it's fun to be part of this. I, uh, I've been touring doing stand-up comedy for the last decade, traveling all around the world, all around this amazing country, the United States of America, and we're international, so Canada, Europe, Australia, Asia. I go all over doing stand-up, but so many comedians right now are not able to tour, so we're going to do things online instead, like this incredible show. So cheers, everybody. Thanks for being part of this, and uh, let's have some fun. I'm going to have a quick drink, watch my hummingbirds, and uh, then walk into my WeboVision studio, my own studio that I've built here in my house in Los Angeles, and we'll be able to take some calls, have some fun, and uh, thanks for joining me for the show. Cheers. For some drafts and some laughs. Ah.
our first beer up tonight is by House. It's their Grapefruit Rattler. It's a beer that honors the creative culture of the city where it came, Los Angeles. It's their premium lager blended with fresh grapefruit juice, a light-bodied, balanced, thirst-quenching formula that is highly sessionable. And we have a 4% alcohol by volume. Good afternoon, my name is Aaron Alger. I'm one of the owners and head of sales at House Beer. Uh, I have the pleasure today of discussing our brand, uh, discussing what a Rattler is, and discussing our newest item, which is the House Rattler. So as far as the brand House Beer, it was started about eight years ago in Southern California with a group of friends on a surf trip um, that recognized the fact that they had grown up drinking all the traditional domestic beers and wanted something a little more craft, but yet sessionable. A little bit into the venture, we identified that we wanted to steer away from our just our traditional lager and do another variation of that. Uh, with a little research, we stumbled upon what was called the Rattler, which was started in 1922 in the Bavarian countryside, when an innkeeper had an influx of cyclists that came in looking for beer, um, and he didn't have enough to satisfy them, so he thought quick on his feet, grabbed some sparkling lemonade, mixed it with his beer, made more volume, and was able to satisfy all the cyclists. It quickly caught on as a thirst quencher in Germany, it made its way over to the U.S., mostly known as a shandy, typically made with lemonade and either a blonde ale or a white ale. Um, but house beer, being really de dedicated to the lager craft, um, we wanted to do a variation for us. Being at Southern California, um, it was really important to use our lager and then really think about what kind of fruit would resonate in our backyard. With that, the grapefruit came about, and here we go with the grapefruit rattler. When drinking Rattler, what do we get? At first sip, we get all that nice, bright citrus flavor, grapefruit up front. As the beer goes down the palate, it ends with a really nice dry finish, which immediately leaves you wanting sip number two. So we know about the beer, let's hear about the can. So being Venice born, we want to stick to our roots and who better than legendary surf skate artist, Craig Stesek. Craig adorned our can with his trademark gradient, skull, and font. So we all know cans are good and drinking beer out of a glass is great, but we at House Beer, this is how we think you should drink a Rattler. This is a lot of fun. We're on drafts and laughs. Sorry I'm late. Let's go! How much fun is this? Tom Green here. But thanks for tuning in and uh, watching. This has been so much fun. I want to thank Eric Geisler for asking me to be part of this. I want to thank all the sponsors and everyone involved. We're going live from Los Angeles on the internet. I find it kind of interesting that, you know, you can build a TV studio and just do that now. That's the world we're living in. I don't know if uh, you remember my show on MTV, uh, The Tom Green Show. But uh, that started as a public access TV show up in Canada when I was a television broadcasting student where I basically made my own TV show. It eventually grew to the point where it got picked up by MTV. I moved to Los Angeles and, and hey, I'm still doing it. I got a show in my, in my house here in Los Angeles. So things are going pretty good. Things are going pretty good. 
And um, we're gonna have some fun tonight. I know we have some special surprise guests who are gonna pop in during this stream. I'm gonna take some calls. I can't say who's gonna pop by, you never know. Maybe, maybe Andy Milanakis from MTV fame, a hilarious, hilarious guy. We might be popping in to uh, Bo's Brewery to talk a little bit about beer with Steve Beauchene up in my hometown of Canada. All live, all of this streaming live here to the show right now. It's kind of exciting. I'm a little nervous. A little nervous about it. Actually, we, we can take calls as well. You can call me uh, on this number, 510-925-1565. Uh, you can call me and uh, it will ring and we will talk. Um, of course, not everyone's going to be able to get on the air because we only have so much time. But if you're lucky and you call and you get through, we'll talk and we'll wing it. Anything can happen. It's... Um, it's a pretty wild thing. I built this entire studio myself. We're here in the middle of this pandemic. It's a crazy time. And uh, I've been here quarantined at home in Los Angeles. And I thought, what am I going to do with all my time? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll build a television studio, uh, which I've been working on for the last couple of months here. Plugging in all of this stuff, literally plugged in all of this stuff by myself. And uh, guess what? It, it Apparently it works. So... Thanks for tuning in. We're going to have a good time, and uh, let's see. Let's take some phone calls. Let's see what happens here. Let's take a few phone calls. Oh, Hello, you're on the air. Are you having fun watching the, the live stream? How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. What's up, man? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, holy crap. I can't believe I, I actually got in. This is holy amazing. Holy crap. I'm in Michigan. Holy crap, you're in Michigan. Cool. Are you having some beers? Yeah, man. Are you having some beers? No. No. No, no. just... Uh, Smoking a little reefer, playing oh, the didgeridoo. Oh, okay. okay, the didgeridoo. Okay, you're playing the yeah. didgeridoo. I don't, I don't even want to know what that means, playing the didgeridoo. You mean the Australian you know, Aboriginal instrument? That's exactly what I'm talking about, Tom. Are you really playing a didgeridoo right now? Is this, is this, is this, you, am I supposed to you, believe this? That do you're, you want to hear it? Yeah, I want to hear your didgeridoo. Do I, do I have to play it? I will play it right now. I want to hear it. Hold on. Let look. me hear this damn we thing. Got the, Let me, we got the happy... We let's got the happy drum let's too. hear this didgeridoo. This is what you know. This is what you get on live Webovision. Okay, you get live didgeridoo. Who would have ever thought that something would be possible? But let's hear it, man. Don't don't keep us waiting. Okay, we'll keep the show moving. Yeah, no. Don't be yeah, lollygagging with there. that didgeridoo. Just start playing right, right now, ready? buddy. Start playing right now. I don't want to. <laughs> Play it closer to your phone. Right? That's a didgeridoo. I mean, that is a didgeridoo. I, 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 was, I was skeptical. I wasn't sure if I was going to get some real didgeridoo action. I don't think that was a didgeridoo, though. Well, good. Well, thanks. Well, thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for calling. You are the best. You too. Have a great day. Next beer up tonight is by Three Weavers. It's their Sun Trap Sour. As days grow warmer and longer, Sun Trap pulls the craft beer lover into its powerfully refreshing orbit. From poolside hangouts to cookouts to porch sipping and hammock lounging, Sun Trap shines at any summertime occasion. This is a 4.5% alcohol by volume. Hey, Tommy here from Three Weavers Brewing here in Inglewood, California. We were founded six years ago by Lynn Weaver. We're raising after her three lovely daughters. Our master and director of operations is Alexander Noel. Uh, today we have for you Suntrap. It's a session sour ale brewed with passion fruit puree, uh, lemon zest, and Mendocino salt. <laughs> So right away you're going to get that nice passion fruit puree, little lemon zest. And that salt in there, it's so refreshing. 
Um, you know, another thing I really love about Suntrap is not only is it sessionable from the standpoint of a lower ABV at 4.5%, the acidity is relatively low as well, and speaking for somebody who gets heartburn, uh, I can drink a lot of these without having that creep up on me. Uh, so, cheers, enjoy. We got a little highlight reel from previous years with our teammates, um, so that way you can kind of see what we're all about. Have fun and be safe. Let's take another call and see what we have next. The phone's ringing off the hook. Let's just take a call. Hello, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, John from Canton, Ohio. John from Canton, Ohio. What's going on in Canton, Ohio right now? Kind of pooping myself. Yeah? You answered. You're, 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 yeah. you're poking yourself? I, I, no, I pooped my pants. Oh, you pooped your pants. Yeah. I'm kind of starstruck right now, to be honest. Oh, it's okay. Don't poop your pants. Yeah, man. I, I grew up watching your stuff, man. This is crazy. That's cool. Well, thanks for calling in, and I appreciate it. Don't poop your pants, though. Yeah, man. Um, don't, it's too don't, late. Don't poo-poo in your pants. I already poo-pooed in my pants. What do, you, what do you do out there in Canton, Ohio? I am a door-to-door -door salesman. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. What are you selling these days? Um... Lawn, like fertilizer, weed control, that sort of thing. Weed control, huh? Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It's getting out of control, the but weed, that, huh? Is it legal out there yeah, now? Yeah, no. The weed? Um, no. No, not yet, but I, we really don't care around here. Right, but you're in weed control, though. Does that sometimes jive with not caring, or? Oh, well, you know, sometimes you gotta care. Yeah. How do you do weed control? I know I'm just kidding around. I know, I know you're not talking about marijuana with your job, right? Weed control. You go sell, like, some sort of uh, chemicals that people spray on their, their lawns? No, actually. It's completely organic. Okay. Hmm. Okay. How do you do that? Um, I honestly have no idea. Ah, okay. It must make it harder to sell it if you don't know what it is. Well, I just started. Ah, yeah. Clearly. I can tell. Well, good. Well, listen. Hey. You might want to figure out what the product is that you're selling. 
And then that'll probably give you a few little talking points when you're going door to door trying to to sort of. Or I mean, I know some things. Yeah, I just so, don't know the yeah, maybe, exact ingredients yeah. that's in it. Maybe know a little more so that when somebody asks the, a question, you're able to answer the first one that that they ask you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I know a lot about sales because I used to sell vacuum cleaners door to door, so I knew all about it, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to have some sense of humor to do that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I know all about vacuum cleaners, man. They really suck. <laughs> yeah, they do. It was just a pun. 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 Yeah. Well, good. Well, hey, hey, I appreciate you calling. Thanks so much for being part of this. And uh, listen, just glad you could check in and go sell some of that weed control that you don't know what it is. Yeah, thank you very much for your words of encouragement. Yeah, thank you, man. Good luck with it. It's, it's good that you're out there helping control the weeds today because I know they're out of control and we need to keep them under yeah, control. They are out of control. And yeah, they're out of control. They're out of control. It. So go sell that mystery weed killer. All right, that's organic. All right. Hey, thank <laughs> thank, you thanks, so man. Appreciate it. Thank you. I don't know. I don't want to go too hard on the guy, but you know, maybe figure out what it is. What's up, you guys? This one's called Love Song. Whenever I'm alone with you You make me feel like I am whole again by Absolution. It's their Torero Blue. This refreshing blonde ale is a collaboration with the University of San Diego. Tonight, it's a 5% alcohol by volume. Yeah, be cool, be cool. Just move with the cool. Don't funk in here to be way too slow. Yeah, let's yeah. just do what we came to do. Just vibe with it. Vibe with it. Vibe with it. Vibe with it. Be cool, be cool. Yeah. 
Hey, how's it going? My name is Steve Ferguson. I'm with Absolution Brewing Company here in Southern California. I feel great to be here in these craziest of times. Times that I wouldn't have fathomed in my lifetime. Shutdowns everywhere. You can't walk into a bar. You can't get a beer. Breweries closed. Wineries closed. Distilleries closed. I mean, my gosh, where do we live? Well, we got to get through it. And I hope I can help you get through it. Torero is the beer that you're going to be drinking that we provided for this event. Torero is the mascot for the University of San Diego. Several years ago, we were approached by the university as we were doing really well in one of their taverns on campus. We developed a relationship and started doing events with them. And a lot of our off campus things kept crisscrossing with alumni and other people that support the university. And a couple of years down the road, they asked us if we would like to be a partner. Today, we are the official brewery of the University of San Diego. What does that mean? You mean a university has a beer? Who knew? But the bottom line is this. Every Torero beer product that we sell portion of the proceeds helps support general scholarships. And everybody who has children knows how expensive a university education is. That's the whole concept. Now, we introduced this project about a year ago. Sold the crap out of it. It was the number one selling beer at all the NCAA games on campus. It was the number one selling beer at Legion Rugby the number one selling beer at Loyal Soccer that started earlier this year and then COVID-19 came and we came skidding to a halt. But guess what? We're all thirsty. And we still want to drink beer, whether it's at home, with a few friends, or whatever, as we get through this crisis together. What you're going to be drinking is a super clean, refreshing lawnmower beer. That's right more beer. You know, like grass cutting, yard work, cleaning out the garage, whatever it might be, you're at home working and you're looking for refreshment that isn't going to put you to sleep. You're going to have nice ready notes, nice citrus notes, but most importantly, it's going to be super crushable and you still got game. So I toast to you. I'm drinking my Torero Blue. Cheers. Oh. Hey, hey, honey, do we still need to water the plants? Let's take another call. Uh, Steve, are you there? Hey, Steve, how you doing? What's going on? Hey, Tom, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. This is so great to see you. You look amazing there at Bo's Brewery. I'm talking right now with Steve Beauchene up in Van Cleek Hill, Ontario, halfway between Montreal and Ottawa. And uh, you're at Bo's Brewery, your brewery. And uh, thank you for uh, talking to me today on Drafts and Laughs. Uh, just to quickly set this up, um, I have, been, I have been friends with Steve for a long time now, and Bo's Brewery makes the Tom Green beer, which we'll talk about. But today, I thought it would be cool to talk to Steve uh, about how you make beer, right? How you make beer. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun process. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, well, before we jump into the, the, the details, the specific details, uh, I just wanted to set this up for everybody watching around the world. And... Uh, Tell us a little bit about uh, Bo's Brewery and how you got started and, and where you are and what you guys do. Yeah, for sure. So Bo's started up in 2006. Uh, my dad and I uh, had a crazy dream to, to start a brewery 
and uh, it took us about a year to get off the ground, but uh, we've now been uh, making tasty beer for about 14 years. Uh, we started off as small as you can possibly start a brewery. Uh, we got some friends and family members together and uh, uh, somehow convinced them to give us a little bit of cash. And basically, we've uh, just, uh, as more money came in, we just kept uh, buying more equipment. And we're now uh, sort of a, a decent regional-sized brewery, and uh, we're still having just as much fun as we, as we did in 2006. And, and first of all, I want to acknowledge the selfie stick. I mean, that's amazing. It's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time using a selfie stick, so I apologize if I'm a little wonky with it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so cool. Like, no, we don't, we don't need a cameraman. We'll just do this ourselves. I'm here running my own studio in my house. You're running your own brewery <laughs> with your own selfie stick. Well, do you, first of all, you want to tell us a little about that, about, tell, tell us a little, little about that tractor there. That's a pretty cool tractor. Sure thing. So Vankley Kills is a farming town. There's about 1,800 people and 2,000 cows. And when we <laughs> opened up, we, uh, we really wanted to, to, I guess, identify with the region and really, uh, really be proud of where, where we're from and who we are. And so we thought the, uh, the small tractor would be a really great uh, iconic symbol of, of a small family-run farm. And so that's been, uh, you know, our, our brewery logo since the beginning. And, you know, we've got, we've got this cool tractor sitting right out front. And uh, pretty much uh, every beer we make has got a tractor on it somewhere. <laughs> that's so cool. Hey, do you want to take us uh, on a little walk through the brewery and we can actually talk about how beer gets made today? On draft, yeah, for sure. On drafts and laughs, right? We've got a beer-themed comedy show going on. So I thought oh, it would perfect. be great to call you and... Uh, talk to you about how we make beer. So just sort awesome. of describe where you are and what we're doing as we go in here. Sure thing. So I'm just at the front of the brewery and uh, we'll just walk in. This is uh, our, our COVID-related uh, takeout window. Oh, okay. Uh, we're, not allow we're not allowing people inside the brewery at this point, but we are uh, uh, still selling beer to, to our wonderful customers like this one over here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Farmers too. Nice. Um, and so this is just uh, would normally be the front entrance where you'd come in for a tour. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that right now, but uh, the, uh, the folks are still uh, showing up and buying our beer through the window here. So kind of all uh, uh, selfie sticks are tough. Here we go. <laughs> so now walk in. Oh, your Wi-Fi might be cutting out a little bit. Let's see if it picks back uh, up. Thirsty when you... customers. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Now, so you can see uh, this is our, our tap room where we would normally have lots of customers, and right now it's uh, it's a little little empty, but um, that's okay because uh, our online orders have been uh, really tremendous. And that's Bose. And, uh, uh, your online, your website is b e a u s dot c a. Dot .ca, not dot .com. Yeah, absolutely. And wait, wait, before, and you, before you go into the brewery, what was that I saw uh, stacked oh. up there? I saw something... Here, let me show you. I saw something stacked up there. It looked kind of like uh, something I might recognize. Yeah. Oh, let me uh, oh, yeah. figure this out yeah, here. That's cool. What, there uh, yeah. we go. Oh, okay, what are we looking at here? Oh, yeah, We're looking at the oh. Tom Green beer. Yes, this is the Tom Green beer. It's not the Green Tom beer. This is my favorite <laughs> beer because it is my beer. If this was your, yeah, that's cool, man. And you made a nice pyramid. Can you show, show, show me that again, sir? I cut away while I was yeah, sitting. Sure yeah, sure Yeah, let's show everybody the Tom Green beer. So it's in cans, and, uh, and these are new in cans. This is the cherry milk stout, the, uh, the seasonal version of the beer. It comes out in three, is it, are we still putting it out seasonally in different, different flavors? That's right, and next week, you'll be able to get the Tom Green Whoa. Summer Stout. Whoa! I haven't, I haven't even seen that one in cans yet. <laughs> I, I look pretty slick there with the Brand with new. the sunglasses on. Okay, show show cool? me that again. Show me that one again. I haven't. Oh yeah, I like that. That is nice for summer. Can you? It's the summer Tom right there. Oh my gosh! Can, can what's you funny is these cans aren't even filled yet. So. Oh okay. You can see uh, if I can oh. show you the inside there. That's what a beer can looks like before it's filled. That's so right. cool. That is cool. It's a lot more interesting once the beer's inside. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, do you want to take us on a little tour through the brewery yeah, and tell us absolutely. how beer gets made? Sure thing. Yeah. So uh, the most important ingredient for beer is actually water. Uh, so we uh, have a well on site. Uh, we get the water straight from the ground. And uh, we don't do a whole lot with it. Uh, we just basically uh, put it through a, 
a filter to remove any uh, any impurities, and uh, and then we brew using that water. Um, from there, uh, your your grain uh, is is probably the ingredient you use the most of, and uh, we sometimes call it malt, and we sometimes call it grain, we sometimes call it barley. It all means the same thing, but uh, basically that's where all the sweetness in your beer comes from, and the color of your beer is usually determined by how, how roasted the grains are. So the more roasted grains that you'd find in a stout uh, provide a darker beer. Um, you also use uh, what everyone's really excited about these days, uh, hops. Hops. And hops are what provide the, the bitterness and the, uh, they're actually a natural preservative, but they also have just wonderful aromas. And there's so many different varietals of hops and those hops give you so many of the different uh, wonderful smells that you get um, in your beer. So but what's so all, anyways, you've just, I'm in the brew you, house right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say, where are you and what is all the stuff we're looking at? That's pretty cool. You've walked up on top of the, all the, the equipment That's and everything. That's right. Yeah. So this is our mash tun. Nice. And we're right in, the, right in the middle of a beer right now. Okay. So you can see that's, that's all the grain um, being soaked with spring water right now. Wow. And uh, the, the water is going to extract all of the sugars that are naturally present in the grain. Yeah. And once we've got all of that um, extracted out, we move over to our kettle, which is over here. And here, we, uh, we bring it all to a rolling boil. And you can see we've got uh, this beer's uh, getting close to boil. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, nearing, the, nearing the boiling mark. That's going to boil for about an hour and a half. And we're going to start adding hops in during the boiling process. Okay. Wow. That's then, amazing. Then we've got one more tank over here. It's a whirlpool. Oh, cool. And... Uh, it's uh, basically inside this tank, uh, the beer whirlpools around. We can add more hops that are just going to give uh, great aromas at this point. Yeah. And then from here, the beer goes to a fermenter. And uh, I'll take you on a walk over to the fermenters now. Okay, that's so cool. Yeah, this is awesome. Like, uh, yeah, let's flip it around. Look at you all cut back to you in a second. But this is so cool to uh, just be live here and getting a tour of Bose Brewery right now in Van Cleek Hill, Ontario, just outside of Ottawa, uh, and also just outside of Montreal, Quebec. You have to get, uh, if you go up to Ottawa, go, go out and visit the brewery in Van Cleek Hill. Steve's out there. Try some Bose beer. B-E-A-U-S, Bose.ca is the website. And uh, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you taking us on a tour today, Steve. That's really awesome, man. Yeah. Appreciate uh, getting to hang out and chat. Yeah, that's so. cool. And and uh, by the way, great camera work too. That's, that's <laughs> you have a yeah. you have another career as a television uh, cameraman. I don't know. I'm I'm realizing that I've been focused in on a, a desk and an empty box and. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think someone else could have probably done some better cuts. But. No, no, no. It looks good. I like the kind of I like the the reality aspect of it of, of you just doing it all yourself. It's pretty cool, man. So, awesome. well, thank you, Steve, for talking to me, and uh, I appreciate it. And uh, let's say uh, hi to say hi to everybody watching on Laughs and Drafts right now. Hey, everybody on Laughs and Drafts. Cheers. Or it might be, it, actually, it might be, it might be drafts and laughs, actually. Let me think about that. Well, hey, everybody on drafts and laughs, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you're on, cheers to you guys. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Steve, man. Hold tight for a second, man. beer up tonight is by Founders. It's their Rubeus. Optimizing the flavor of fresh raspberries, Rubeus is the perfect blend of sweet, tart, and refreshing. It has a 5.7% alcohol by volume. Hi everyone, my name is Marklin. I am the Education Manager for Founders Brewing Company. We are based in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I'm coming to you today to share our story. And then hopefully you have one ready to go. Uh, we are going to sample Rubeus together. 
1997 is when we got our start as a company. Mike and Dave are our co-founders, and with a very small crew, they hit the ground running, uh, made a lot of beers in the first handful of years that we thought people wanted to drink. Uh, beer styles that were popular at the time, but we weren't really trying anything new. We weren't pushing ourselves to do anything different because we just wanted to just, you know, pay our bills and be successful and grow as a business. But um, that didn't work for us. And the bank eventually came in probably five or six years into our timeline and said, hey, guys, like you are so far behind on all your bills. Um, you know, you've tried to pay us in beer. We don't like you here. Uh, you know, like, let's call it quits. We're going to bankrupt you and end of story. So Mike and Dave are heartbroken because they put everything into the business. But that's when the light bulb goes off and they realize, hey, like, we have enough time. Let's make one last beer. We'll make a beer that we want to drink and that we can be proud of because it's going to be the last beer. We want to drown our sorrows in something tasty. So they picked the name first, which was Dirty Bastard. And then it becomes this beautiful 8.5% scotch style ale. So unique for the time, of course, it's bigger than most scotch ales, and it's named Dirty Bastard. So all those reasons got us good and a little bit of bad attention, but that got the conversation going and put us into that craft beer talk. Um, it renewed the confidence that Mike and Dave started with, and it was enough to keep us going, and we were fortunate to not have to shut the doors. Dirty Bastard, in a sense, saved us as a company. So we're very proud of where we came from, uh, but we're also proud of where we're going and the new brands that we're coming out with. So you're probably familiar with Centennial IPA and All Day IPA and our Barrel Age program. Uh, we're happy with our entire portfolio because it's been a 23 year process. So uh, one of the beers in our portfolio, of course, that we want to talk about today is Rubeus. So this can uh, is beautiful, right? Let's say that first off. But uh, raspberries right on the can so that indicates the featured fruit for this beer it's 5.7 percent and just 15 IBUs so very light and easy on your palate uh, let's pour some so you'll see it's a beautiful red color we use pure raspberries not a concentrate not a powder not a you know flavor packet if you will um, if you think of raspberry candy versus a real raspberry there's quite a big difference and we want that pure raspberry flavor in that profile. Jeremy our brewmaster loves to use raspberries because one ingredient addition it's tart it's sweet it really adds a lot to that beer so let's have a sip. Mm, it's very tasty. Uh, so you may think this would be a summer seasonal or something just um, for those warmer months but fortunately um, it's a year-round brand for us successful in all four seasons. So uh, while we can't get our raspberries year round in Michigan, we do source them locally when we can. Um, but we're, you know, that's a fun aspect of the process too, to get them uh, from, you know, local places. And we also have this beer um, on nitro on draft too. So a couple variations for you. And then also this is a great pairing beer. You can pair it with anything from a light summer salad to a chocolate brownie. Uh, whatever you're doing and whatever you're eating, uh, Rubeus can go right next to it. So if you haven't had it before, I hope you enjoyed your first uh, taste of it. I appreciate you listening to our story. We love to share the founder's story with our friends and family. And if you find yourself in Grand Rapids or Detroit, we have tap rooms in both. And we'd love to uh, share a beer with you there. Cheers. You want to see something fun? Let's have a look at something I did um, 20 years ago I, uh, when I was doing the, uh, and you may have seen this clip before, but you know, we're getting the system going here in the new WebOvision studios. I like to kind of try some things out here. So I'm going to play a clip. I'm going to actually play a clip. This is a clip from about 20 years ago, 1996. How many years ago is that? Mm, I can't even do the math. Is that 24 years ago? Jeez, I'm not good at math.
Apparently we just noticed that. Um, this is me uh, talking to a guy in the street 24 years ago. Where are you off to? Where I'm off to. Where are you going? I don't think it's any of your damn business. You want to tell me where you're going? None of your damn business where I'm going. You're going to the parliament buildings? Both to you and I'm not going to the parliament building. Uh, you going to the bank? No. no. I don't think it's any of your damn business. No, I know. It's not my business. No. I'm actually... Do I ask you where you're going? Uh, Answer my question. Where the hell are you going? Uh, Answer my... Hey, where you going? Hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Come on, answer my question. Want to start something? No, I don't. I don't want to start. Take a flying. What? Take a flying. You're the one being rude. I'm not being rude. I, I, you're chasing me. Blah blah blah. All right? Calm down. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's 24 years ago. Sometimes I think about my life and I think, uh, what have I done? No, I, um, I've had a lot of fun. And uh, these clips that I made on the streets of Ottawa, uh, they led to me uh, getting my own show on MTV and uh, then led to this. All of this! So, very excited to be here. Very excited. Our fifth beer up tonight is by Made West. It's their pale. This heavenly hopped West Coast pale ale is bursting with a bright citrus and fruity hop complexity. It has just enough malt presence to allow the loads of hops to shine through. This crisp, hop forward beer has a dry, refreshing finish. We have a 5.6 alcohol by volume with this beer. <laughs> Welcome to Midwest Brewing in Ventura, California. I am Josh, Director of Sales, and we have Ben, our brewer over here, and then our co-founder, brew, uh, head brewer, uh, Mike Morrison over here. And uh, we just wanted to give you a little history on the brewery today and uh, talk about our featured beer, uh, Pale Ale. So we'll just jump right into it. Uh, Mike, why don't you go ahead and give us a little history on the brewery? Yeah, so we opened in 2016 at our uh, four-year anniversary here in January. Um, yeah, so grew up here in Ventura and uh, got into home brewing. And in 2016, we opened up the brewery here about a mile from the beach. And we now have a second tasting room. And that's on the Ventura Pier, which is awesome. Yeah, it's kind of a bunch of friends all grew up together and now all share a part here in this brewery. Uh, it's a pretty cool story. <laughs> we'll just jump right into the beer since we got it in front of us. And uh, we'll hard out beer in front of us and not just go into it. So, Ben, why don't you give us a little uh, kind of description of the beer? Hops in it. Sure, Dan, yeah. Tasty notes, all the above. So what we have here is uh, the Made West Pale, uh, definitely a favorite amongst the brew team here and I think all the staff. Kind of hits that sweet spot with ABV for craft beer, at least for me, coming in at 5.6%. You 
super duper light malt profile uh, featuring Mosaic, Simcoe, and Equina hops, all super fruit forward hops that I think all have a nice like early component as well as a bit of like a, like a brightness, a bit of an edge to kind of give it a bit of a uniqueness for being just an all Mosaic beer, although Mosaic does take the lead. A lot of kind of, for me, you know, some tropical fruits, I get a lot of guava, citrus, it's gonna be more like kind of orange, orange rind, and there is a bit of a, a green grassiness to it, but um, just jumps out the glass, super aromatic beer, and one of, one of my personal favorites. Cheers. Cheers. We uh, have not only this beer that we're tasting today, we got four beers in distribution that you guys uh, have available to you if you live in California. Uh, we are distributed in retail, uh, restaurants and bars throughout Santa Barbara and San Diego. Um, and we also ship our cans throughout California as well. And you can get that on our website. Um, and the four beers are, we have a uh, standard ale, which is a light ale. And then we have a pale ale, which we're drinking today. Uh, not sure you can see some of the cans behind us here, but we got our IPA, which is a West Coast IPA, and then uh, AZ IPA. Um, and it's four beers we have through the, the SoCal Distro, and then once in a while we do special releases that you can find on our website.
sixth beer is by Honest Abe. It's their Mexican lollipop. Watermelon habanero cider with the perfect mix of fruit and spice. It has a 7% alcohol by volume. Hey there, Rockstar Brew Festers. Uh, I'm Spencer Chambers, founder, owner, and brewer at Honest Abe Cider House and Meadery in South LA and Carson. Uh, here we produce uh, Hard ciders, meads, uh, apple brandy. If you look up here in the uh, small barrels there, we've got uh, some small batch apple brandy that we produce uh, aging there. Uh, Honest Ape started back in 2014, making batches in my studio apartment in Venice Beach. Uh, we became uh, Southern California's first production cider house. And uh, now in our taste room, we have 40 taps, cider, mead, sangrias, wines. Uh, we would make uh, cocktails with the brandy. Uh, so come see us sometime. You can always order online as well. We uh, self-distribute all over LA and uh, we're on tap at Disneyland and most of uh, Whole Foods. So, uh, or just shoot us an email if you've got questions about where to find us. Uh, so today we're going to be trying our uh, Mexican lollipop cider which is a uh, watermelon habanero uh, that we came up with in the middle of quarantine when we had nothing better to do. But uh, it turned out really well and been super popular. So let's uh, give that a try. So, uh, on this day, the forefather of craft, Mexican lollipop, 7% ABV. So, and, uh, Packs a punch on the alcohol as well as uh, the spiciness here. So the uh, one disclaimer on this, if you pop it and it's uh, foaming or uh, carbonation is bubbling quite a bit and you go to take a drink, it's gonna probably burn your nose in the back of your throat. So there's uh, quite a bit of habanero spice on this. So uh, generally let it settle down before you take the first sip. And then uh, with the first sip, you're going to get a lot of spice on it uh, up front. It's going to burn a little bit. And then uh, you get a little bit of a sweet uh, watermelon notes. And then actually uh, with the second sip, you get a little more sweetness and it starts to cool it down. And then after that, it's just a very enjoyable beverage. Uh, and so I hope you like that. It's been our pleasure to serve you. Come see us sometime. All the best. Thank you. Cheers. Let's take another call and uh, see uh, if we can keep this show on the road. Hello, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Tom Green, it's Eric. Oh, Eric. From Arizona. What? Eric from Arizona. How's everything going out there in Arizona right now? It's going great, man. Yeah, very uh, good. You know, I was actually about to start live streaming myself. Oh, yeah? Oh, really? Were you? Where, 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 are you, where do you, yeah, can you hold on a sec? Oh, wait, the phone's, I was going to answer the other phone. Where are you, where are you live streaming? Well, uh, it would be IRL, you know, okay. out on the streets talking hold, hold, to people. Hold on one second, okay? Yeah. Hello? Oh, they hung up. Okay. I was just going to tell them to call back later. Good, man. Well, listen, uh, what do you do out there when you're not streaming on the streets like a maniac? Hold, well, hold on. Hello? Yeah. No, I'm just talking to the guy on the other phone. One second. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing real good. I'm doing good. What's your name? Where are you calling from on the landline? Jared from from Subway. Oh, different one. I know. I'm just I'm just kidding. I'm just. Kidding. Do you get that a lot now? Yeah, probably. Yeah, are you with probably me? not as are much fun. Me? Probably not as much fun getting that these days. Hey, can you call back a little bit? I'm on the other line. I'm live right now. Okay. I know this isn't the live line though. This is this is the, this is the this is the answering machine line. Don't call this when it's live because I, I can't talk to you right now because because I'm, I'm I'm on the air right now. I, I I can't I can't take this call right now because I'm on the air right now. See? No, I can't take the call because I'm on the air with the other guy right now. So so I can't take a call. I can't take your call right now. I'm on the on the line with the other guy, right? No, I'm on the, the other guy. I don't know. I'm on the other guy. The guy from the where where are you calling from, other guy? Hold on. Arizona. Arizona. The guy from Arizona. Arizona. What's, what's your name, my friend? 
Eric. Eric. I'm talking to Eric from Arizona right now on the show. I can't talk to you right now on the landline. I'm on the show with Eric. Um, he is cool, but did you, if you're watching, you would know I can't take the landline call now. <laughs> okay, I know. I just wanted to tell you. I'll call, call, call later, okay? Call later. I'll be around later, okay? All right. Th thanks, man. Eric, Arizona. What's going on? Good to see you. Tom G, what up? What up? Back to Eric, man. Back to Eric. Just like that, right? So what's going on yeah. out there? <laughs> what's going on out there in uh, your part of the world, my friend? Well, quick story. I was on uh, with a uh, live streamer named Captain Content. Okay. My name in the chat is GI Joe. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, of course, you know, I took him out shooting and whatnot, and then he got his channel banned for a day. Ah. Uh, and mm. so mm. you know that didn't go so well, but okay. Uh, cool. Everybody kind of liked me, so yeah. you know, they wanted me to do it. Interesting. I'm now I'm not. I, I'm not really sure what you just said. To be honest with you. <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, I heard a lot of words come out. Uh, channel ban, shooting, da, 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 all this stuff. But I, 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 it didn't really sound like anything that I could really understand exactly what you meant. Like, uh, you, you mean shooting guns? You went shooting guns on a live stream and you got banned or something? Yeah, target shooting. Oh, look at that. I actually did understand exactly what you said. I'm a pretty smart guy, right, Eric? I concur. I'm a pretty smart guy, right? I do concur. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty smart. Well, shit, Eric. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for calling. Hey, You're the your best. Phones are working good, man. The phones are working. I appreciate the web vision. You know, I, it's I'm getting this thing dialed in. It's working a little better every day. So, <laughs> so, so I'm feeling better and better about it. So. Thanks for calling, Eric. You're the best, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Careful with those guns, team. though, okay? Don't, don't uh, you know, shoot your thumb off. Well, it's Arizona. We're fine. Yeah. You, I'm sure you know what you're doing out there. Probably grew up with those things, right? Yeah. Not like us. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, absolutely. All right, y'all. See you later there. <laughs> I reckon. Y'all be careful out there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Peace out. Thanks. Thanks. Peace. Bye. All right. Cool. That's cool. We're having fun. We're having fun. We've got a good flow going. Next up, we have beer number seven, Hermosa. It's their Four Winds West Coast IPA. West Coast IPA dry hopped with copious amounts of cashmere and Simcoe. Hints of melon with a smooth bitterness. It's a 6.9. Cheers, guys. This next one's called Steer It Up.
towel and sear it up, yeah. Thank you guys. Good call here. Hello, you're there. You're on the air. Uh, what's what's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm. Uh, my name is Kostas. I'm calling from Amsterdam. Amsterdam. That's amazing. Amsterdam. Yeah. You got to turn the volume down on your computer in the background, though. Amsterdam. Are you going to get confused? Oh, it's Tom Green. I, I got you on the phone now. Yeah, that's me on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it is, yeah. And that accent that you have is, uh, what kind of accent is that? That's not Dutch, is it? Where are you from originally? Yeah, it's really strange. But I'm French. born in, in Holland, but oh. my parents are Greek. And when I speak uh -huh. French or English, uh -huh. my Greek uh, background comes I hear a little bit of the <laughs> I hear a little bit of the Greek in there, absolutely. And you speak French too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Tu parles français aussi, oui? Oui, je parle un petit peu oui, français je, aussi. je parle français un petit peu aussi parce que je suis un Québécois. Mes amis parlent français avec moi. Oui, toute oui, la oui. gang, allô, toute <rire> la gang, comme ci, comme ça. Je suis une écreuil, je suis une banane jaune. Je suis une banane <rire> jaune. Je suis une écreuil <rire> grise, mange les noix. Le, je suis un <rire> poisson nagé dans la rivière. Je suis un, euh, un oiseau. Je suis un oiseau. Hello. Je suis un petit oiseau. Right, I can speak French. Yeah, I know how to speak French. Sure. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I do it all the time. What did I just say there? If you can speak French, what did I just say? Do you understand what I just said? Yeah, you were a really beautiful little bird. Yeah, that's right. I'm a beautiful little bird. A little, a little American bird. Ah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I am American and Canadian. I was born in Canada, and I, and I and I am Canadian, but I am also American now, as of uh, as of one year ago. So. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. There you I'm, go. I'm following your there. rebel vision. Uh, yeah, it's really great to be on the on the on the yeah. podcast. Are you following my ongoing haircut? This is unbelievable. Yeah. I keep looking at myself yeah, yeah. in the screen here, and I'm like, I can't even believe this. What's going on with my haircut? I, I, this is not what my hair is normally like, but I'm in a, we're in a global pandemic and I haven't been able to get my hair cut uh, because uh, we're in a global pandemic. Uh, so it's just kind of get this frizzy thing going on. And it's driving me nuts. I bet you got pretty good hair being Greek and French and all that stuff, huh? <laughs> nah, I shaved it off, but it's, uh, it's really short. Okay. Well, I would have figured being Greek and French, you'd have a pretty good haircut. Fashionable. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're pretty fashionable, you French Frenchman. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a Dutch guy with yeah. gr Greek uh, Greek blood in his veins. Yeah, Dutch guy with Greek blood and French language skills. French, Unbelievable. French daughter. Yeah, <laughs> are you pretty fashionable? You're pretty fashionable. Um, Nah, I'm about 50 years old, so um, I'm not that oh. fashionable anymore. Okay, okay. well, when, you're, when you were younger, uh, what, you can't be fashionable when you're 50? I'm fashionable. Look at this shirt. I'm 48. I'm almost 50. Nah. We're about the same nah, age. Man. I'm not shying away from, from cutting-edge fashion. Look at this shirt. Maybe it's just a face, but I'm going back to basics. What's that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, not too flashy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. what, maybe you should change that up a little bit, huh? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Who knows? Just the face. Yeah. Maybe you should get a little more flashy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good advice, man. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks for calling, yeah. my friend. I appreciate it.
eighth beer tonight is from Smog City. It's their Amarilla Gorilla IPA. This IPA is definitely from the jungle with notes of mango, papaya, apricot, and a touch of citrus and pine in the nose. This is one big, beautifully hoppy IPA. Enough malt balances and a restrained bitterness keep it very drinkable. This beer has a 7.8% alcohol by volume. Hi, I'm Jake Ainsworth. I'm uh, the head brewer here at Smog City Brewing Company. I've been with the company for six and a half years. Nice. My name is Kathy. Um, I am our sales and distribution manager. Uh, I've been with the company a little over two years now. Uh, so my job is to take all of the wonderful beer that Jake here brews and get it out into the world for everyone to enjoy at their homes. Uh, today we're going to be tasting Amarillo Gorilla. Uh, if you don't know much about Smog City Brewing, we used to have six-pack bottles. This was the first beer we put into 16-ounce four-pack cans. It is 7.4% ABV. And in a moment here, Jake will uh, explain a little bit more about this beer. Um, if you love it, you love what you're drinking, you can find it in your local Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Bevmo's. Uh, if you're outside of San Diego, Total Wine, and maybe sometimes your local on-premise craft account, depending on where you are. All right, and back to Jake here, since he brews the beer, he's the best one to tell you about it. Yeah, so uh, Smog City Brewing, uh, this is Amarillo Gorilla. It's actually one of my favorite beers that we do here. Uh, we've been doing it for a long time now. It's actually been since before my time here. Uh, I guess the main call out right now is the uh, the name itself, Amarillo Gorilla. It pays tribute to the hop Amarillo hops. Uh, if you're not sure what Amarillo hops are, uh, they're very characteristic. Of uh, themselves, not a lot of hops that are like them, but they they definitely showcase more of like a kind of a summer stone fruit, um, kind of a papaya, pineapple, mango guava, uh, and then we add some other hops to complement them in there: Simcoe and Centennial. Uh, that kind of lends more of like a citrusy, but also piney uh, resonate element to it as well. So the long and short is, this guy's a hot bomb. So I guess just the first thing, the appearance, uh, it's a little bit. I'd say a little bit more like an orange hue, um, typically for a West Coast IPA, that's what you'd expect. Um, all the way to like a kind of a golden copper color. It kind of just pays homage to the, the malts that are supporting the hops. Um, but this one, like I said, we've changed over the years. We've kind of lightened it up a little bit and uh, just with a nice pillowy head too. So, and then... Cheers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So again, full body, definitely full body. Um, I just can't say balance enough on this guy. It's uh, It's got a nice bitterness, but it's not lean drink. I guess that's kind of the biggest takeaway because sometimes West Coast IPA is a little bit too much, um, but a beer like this is going to be, even for the non-IPA drinker, it's going to be very approachable. And again, it's the IPA um, that I'm most passionate about that we do. Uh, even our house IPA is just as great, but this one makes it both kind of special place. And 7.4%, crushable, not too too deep in the well in percentage. And uh, again, we've changed it over the years, so even that's kind of been more rounded. But yeah, in terms of flavor, um, as I mentioned before, a lot of tropical notes, um, a little bit in that citrus and like orange zest, but really heavy on like papaya, mango, apricot, stone fruit, some stone fruit, etc. Uh, and yeah, and even kind of a little bit of that pine that's come from that citrus as well. So. Kind of got it all in one, I guess. Is what say. Yeah, so as a non brewer, I would just say that this idea to me is just super juicy and tropical hop flavors with that really nice, you get that pine, but it's got that clean finish. So I'm not thinking about the sip that I had beforehand. I'm like anticipating the next sip because it's already gone and delicious and I want more. So I find it to be very approachable and drinkable, even though it is a little bit higher ABV and it, you know does have that dry grittiness to it as well, um, which I think makes it a delightful summer summer option, um, but also good year round. So, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you enjoy this beer as much as we do. Uh, look for it. Um, get it now shipped to your house too, it's in California. Uh, keep an eye out for other Smart City beers, which can make a whole wide variety from Wild Ales to IPAs. Um,
Hey everybody, this is very exciting. I am very, very excited to uh, introduce today uh, my very good friend, the hilarious Andy Milanakis. Andy, how are you? Good to have you on the show, man. I mean, when Tom Green calls you hilarious, that's a good compliment. That's a good day. Oh my gosh, this is this is so <laughs> cool. Thanks for, thank, where are you? Where are you right now? That doesn't look like your house. Oh, oh, um, <laughs> I'm, in a, <laughs> I'm in Texas right now at an Airbnb. Me and my friends came here on a little trip. It's kind of like Gilligan's Island. I, uh, uh, you know, the quarantine kind of happened and we just decided it would be safer to stay here than to uh, travel back to LA. So we're just, staying put and uh we're actually getting a one-year lease out here too because we just want to be here because there's a lot of streamers here and stuff really um R really there's there's, yeah. there's a lot of streamers there is that like a place like streamers go to certain places or yeah well i mean there's one big thing texas has no state income tax and there's a few states that have no state income tax and so I feel like uh, a couple of big streamers moved here, and then it became like this hot spot for streamers, which is ah, kind of weird. It's kind of like but, it's kind of like the Cayman Islands for streamers, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're in like the suburbs outside of Austin, Texas, and it's hot as hell. It's like a hundred something degrees, but we're kind of just hermiting right now, just doing live streams inside and you know staying away from the public staying away from society because you know, it's safer to do that i know what i love i love the fact that you've got like an amazing microphone you've got an incredible uh audio and video feed because you can see here i'm in my studio here i've mm -hmm. got all my stuff i take that very seriously i take my streaming and my 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 video and audio very seriously um you know because we've been doing this a long time we've been doing this probably yeah like we've been we've been doing this probably longer than most people, right, Andy? Um. Well, I mean, if you if you look at the scope of who's doing stuff today, like on the internet, then yeah, I think we're we're as we say, old frogs. Yeah. Um. But um. I mean, if you compare it to like you know some actors from the 1920s maybe they have us be <laughs> right right no i mean i'm not i'm not saying like you're charlie chaplin and i'm buster keaton i'm not saying that we should remake a silent movie yeah that would be cool me yeah. and you that would be pretty sick we'd save some dough on microphones too that'd be good <laughs> hell yeah tonight is from Santa Monica. It's their PCH Golden Milk Porter. Pale Chocolate Heaven gets in rich golden color from unroasted malt, finished with Madagascar vanilla beans, a touch of chamomile, and over a hundred pounds of cocoa nibs per batch. Velvety milk chocolate gives way to a restrained bitterness and a silky sweet honey finish. This beer has a 6% alcohol by volume. Welcome everybody to Santa Monica Brew Works, Westside LA's first and only independent craft production brewery. We've been brewing beer here since 2014, just about a mile away from the world famous Santa Monica Pier. That's why we say our beer is beach brewed. I'm Johnny Wardell, marketing director. I'm here with Santa Monica native, born and bred, our head brewer, Drew Gramati. Good to be here. We make five core beers that you'll see out in the market all through Southern California and beyond. One of those beers is the one that you've got in front of you right now. That's the PCH Golden Milk Porter. This is a seriously unique beer. Um, and you know, it's probably got the longest name of any beer that you're gonna enjoy in this festival, and really any beer that you're gonna see anywhere. It's descriptive, at least in its, uh, in its title. Descriptive in its title and deceiving in its look. Santa Monica Brew Works Golden Milk 
order pale chocolate heaven. We'll explain what all that means. But um, Drew, why, why do we call this a golden milk porter? I mean, we're definitely taking some liberties calling it a porter. Um, just by the appearance and the addition of some of the more unique ingredients, it kind of diverges from what a traditional porter is. But I thought that would porter is closest to flavor profile, what, what you're going to be tasting, in my opinion. Right, because when we're tasting beer, first thing that we're going to notice about it, obviously, we encourage everybody to pour it into a glass. Visually, this is not what you would consider a porter. However, as you start to get take a smell, you start to give it a taste, you're going to notice it doesn't taste as you might expect by the look of it. And I think that one of the first things you're going to get on the nose, on the palate, chocolate. Definitely. So we add fresh cacao nibs to each batch. We let it sit on the cacao nibs for over a week. We add over 100 pounds per batch of beer. And that's really what gives it an extra fresh chocolatey kick. Um, in addition, we also have some light flavoring additions of chamomile and vanilla bean. Um, those just sort of work to round out the, the bitterness of the chocolate and bring it back to more of like a sweet balance. Uh, we also use some more robust grains, but not dark grains. So the grains still give it like a nice graham crackery biscuit base without giving it the dark color. And then we also taking the liberty of adding a little bit of lactose or milk sugar, which gives it an extra richness and a, a creaminess and a fullness to the uh, mouthfeel. The only ingredients that you're using, there's no other added flavors. It's just those adjuncts that you had mentioned. Yes. All of that big chocolate flavor, which you wouldn't expect from a beer this color. Right. It's coming from those cocoa nibs, 100 pounds. So this beer was named one of the best fall beers. It just It's the kind of beer that you want to have either after a meal, you want to just sit in front of the campfire with this, probably pairs great with s'mores. We know that this does pair really well with food. So if it's dinner time, uh, this was actually named by the LA Times as one of the best beers to enjoy with fried chicken. Um, Drew, you do a uh, horchata version of this. It's amazing. You do a holiday yeah. spice version. Uh, if you come into the tasting room, one of our most popular beers is the breakfast beer where we take this as a base and then top it with um, nitro cold brew coffee. Yep. Um, you put these in whiskey barrels, age it, and that brings out some crazy flavor. We've had uh, a lot of success barrel aging this beer too. If there was one way to level this thing up, it might be pairing it with ice cream because you, this already tastes like dessert. Putting it with uh, a, a scoop of vanilla ice cream or even making your own beer float uh, it might be take this thing to a whole new level. Definitely, definitely. That's been on menus before and uh, I highly recommend it. This is the perfect dessert beer. We're not sure where we are in this uh, <laughs> tasting, but exactly. uh, regardless, uh, enjoy the rest of the show and thank you for your time. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. last beer tonight is from Network. It is their specialty surprise. And we can't spoil it for you. After a badass four-year run out of a brick and mortar, Network Brewery is closing their doors. Cheers to all the great brews they made for us. This is the final beer Network will brew. Hey, this is Brian from Network Brewery. Uh, this is coming to you on our second to last day of operation. Uh, it's been a great four years of operation. We've been, we started here when I was uh, consulting and flying in every single weekend for about a year trying to get this thing off the ground. Um, it's just been very sad that we had to uh, come to a pandemic that uh, decided to shutter our doors. 
but if you are uh, seeing this, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy one of our beers. Uh, we have our Amber Lager, which won uh, bronze at the OC Fair this year. Uh, we have our, uh, what was it, our uh, hostile work environment, and we also have our Buried in Debt. The Buried in Debt has been just very phenomenal. It's a nice 8% Poisonberry Blonde. Uh, but yeah, we'll have a bunch of deals tomorrow. Uh, we will probably not have anything else available except for online. Um, it's been a wild ride for the last four years. We've had uh, so many challenges. I feel like that's been part of what business ownership is. Uh, we've had some good times with uh, friends. We've had good times while they left to move away. But you know that is the nature of business and how we operate. Um, during the pinnacle of our area, we were actually distributing all the way from Hermosa down to uh, downtown San Diego. Um, obviously, we're not going to be doing that anymore. Um, anybody out there trying to get into a brewery, I would definitely say you know you have to have a lot of passion and you have to have the idea that you will not be getting a ballast point buyout because that's not going to happen. It's going you have to be realistic about being an actual business owner and selling a product that you know a lot of people do enjoy but you don't have to be uh, you know, overbearing with it saying like, oh, it's the best product in the world. No, you should, you should just make the best product in the world. Don't overdo it with, uh, I guess, ego. Um, well, I think that's about it. I, I appreciate you, uh, you calling into my show today, uh, uh, Andy. Yeah, man, thank you for having me. Um, I definitely, Maybe next time we'll uh, we'll we'll skip we'll skip the discussion and we'll go right into acting like fucking idiots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, or, um, I mean, we're to, you're welcome I mean, to put like, them on my stream too. We can totally act like idiots for like a minute or two now if we want. If we just want to do that for a minute or two, <laughs> <laughs> just super forced. Like, okay, yeah. in this portion, yeah. Yeah, here, in this here, portion, here, I'll be yeah. starting to act like an idiot. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll are set, you guys ready? I'll, I'll set it up for you. Okay, here, let me let me let me set it up for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it's been a great episode with Andy, and uh, just in case uh, it was a little too serious, now Andy Milanakis is going to act like an idiot. That's very beneath me, Tom. I feel the water on my balls. Water on my balls. I'm not joking. There is water on my balls. I'm appalled at the water on my balls. I'm appalled at the water on my balls. It's kind of cold, but not too really. I'm appalled. 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 I'm appalled by the water from my ball. I'm appalled by the water from my ball. I gotta say ball because I only have one. Pulled by the water from a ball. I'm a pole, I'm a pole, I'm a pole, I'm a pole, I'm a pole. One ball, you need nut, you need nut. You did nut, you did nut, you did nut. You the nut, you the nut, I'm a nut. You the nut, 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 you the nut. One ball, water from the ball, on the ball. You ever say a regular word and it starts to sound weird? Oh yeah. The, 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 the. That is a weird word. That is a weird word. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, man. The. Love you, buddy. Hey, buddy, I love you too, bro. Yeah, thank you so Hope much. Hope to see you soon. I appreciate it. Andy Melanakis, everybody, thank you so much. Wave goodbye, and I will see you soon. Be Except for the wife, wave. Yeah, be safe out there in Texas. And... Um, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. I can't. I I'll, my I'll, pants. I'll, I'll call into your show soon too. Yeah, let me know when you want to do it. We'll uh, chat for a little bit. My chat will be happy to see you. All right. Thanks, Andy. But I want to. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. I appreciate it. My name is Tom Green. Uh, you've been watching Webovision, and we're. Uh, we've had so much fun. So much fun. And uh, you're all awesome. And we'll see you later, every. What the hell's going on? We'll see you later, everybody. Bye!
Well, we're approaching the last of this uh, video streaming. So uh, I know a lot of you still haven't been finishing up your beers. So uh, I'll cheers you. This is Brian Anderson from Network Brewery signing off. Well, folks, that's our show tonight. A special, special thank you to our host, Tom Green, and for all the breweries that participated this evening. We will see you at the next show.